For a generation, Nevada was the only place in the country where people could legally gamble on sports. But when football season kicks off next week, many fans won't have to travel or break the law to place a bet. Since a Supreme Court ruling in May, five other states have legalized it, and three of them are already taking bets. If you're looking to make money, few places are as enticing as New Jersey, where business owners and politicians have been fighting to legalize sports betting for almost a decade. Dennis Drazen, who owns New Jersey's Monmouth Park racetrack, helped lead the push. We visited him the day his sports book opened. Normally I would give a long speech, but today's not the day for me. Uh, today's the day for Governor Murphy to make the first bet, and I want to get him to make the first bet here now. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. This is a huge step forward for gaming, for the tracks, for the economy in this state. So I've said $20 on the New Jersey Devils to win Lord Stanley's Cup. Let's go. Nearly a decade ago, Drazen thought the horse track's days were numbered. Revenue was steadily declining as horse racing's popularity waned. And the state had just cut off about $17 million in subsidies. We had to figure out a way to save the track. So the governor said, look, no more subsidies, but you want something to run with? Here's sports betting. So the genesis of the Supreme Court ruling of states being able to decide what they want to do is wanting to preserve horse racing in New Jersey? Exactly. In 2012, Drazen began a fight, mostly with the major sports leagues, to overturn a 1992 law that effectively banned sports betting everywhere in the country but Nevada. His bet? Make this a state's rights issue. The smart thing was to let the courts adjudicate the issue. So I went out publicly, said we're going to start taking bets. And the leagues took up the challenge. I wanted to have a court decision that said we could do this. You can bet on games, you can bet on futures, you can bet on who's going to win next year's Stanley Cup. Drazen was so sure of his strategy that he partnered with William Hill, one of the largest betting houses in the world, to build a $3 million sports book before sports betting was even legal in New Jersey. Betting on the Yankees to win against the Tampa Bay Devil Ray. Giants, I'm looking at the spread for the Giants. I'm putting 60 on Argentina. Betting 60, you'll win $57.15. In the first month and a half, Monmouth Park has taken in $3.1 million in sports betting revenue. Well, it's just the Yankees, uh, not the one line, the, the regular Or about 42% of all sports betting revenue in the state. It's going to be $200. Oh, How big do you think the market is in general? For sports betting or for everything? For sports betting in New Jersey. Based on what we know about the market, we believe New Jersey is a $10 billion market. So I expect $1 billion annually to be wagered here at Monmouth Park. Numbers like these are part of why the major sports leagues have opposed legal betting for so long. They've said it could lead to match fixing, point shaving, and all sorts of other fishy stuff. But big money is also why most of the leagues have now come around. Ted Leonsis, who owns four Washington, D.C. sports franchises, including the NBA's Wizards, is part of a group of sports owners who've been openly fantasizing about how that's going to change American sports. I think this would be great for the players because we're in partnership with them, and round numbers, they're getting half of all of the revenue that's being generated. For franchises, it'll be fantastic because we need to have both national and local revenues to grow our pie. And this is a big pot of money, but today it's been 100% margin for the bad guys. The shift away from illegal sports betting will be slow, since it'll have to happen state by state. And it might only be partial because states will tax it and drive up the price. But when even the most conservative estimates suggest $50 billion are being bet under the table, you take what you can get. The longer the leagues wait on the sidelines, the likelier they are to fall behind in the new fight over who gets to make the most money off the newly legal industry. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver has already floated the idea of taking 1% of all money wagered on the sport, claiming it's needed to maintain the integrity of the game. The NBA has asked for a 1% integrity fee 
Yeah, I wish, I wish we hadn't called it an integrity fee because we have very high integrity as it is. We don't need to be paid for it. What we need to be paid for is our IP. Today, leagues like the NBA gather enormous amounts of real-time data. They can track just about every movement by every person on the court. They use it to evaluate players. But if people like Leonsis have their way, those data sets will eventually have another, much more lucrative use, allowing fans to bet in-game, from their seats, on all kinds of innocuous things. There's this notion of prop bets, betting around situations. And so you can see now people wanting to stay to the end of the game. If it's a blowout, um, every play still will matter. You'll see the coach call a timeout, and people will be betting. I think he'll call for a pick and roll play. And someone will say, no, I think the point guard will roll to the basket and kick out to someone at the three point line. And you'll be able to bet um, right there. Everything will become a competition. I, I don't know if that world sounds great to me. People are sitting in an arena on their phone betting and and you see that they're watching the game, but they're also watching their bet. It'll just become as mainstream and as one touch and as baked into the way we do things as, you know, buying a, a book or, you know, getting a car on Uber. <laughs>